Hi, my name is Eric Simpson. I've got to tell you, I am absolutely super excited to be here today to deliver this seven steps to holistic weight loss and better health. And there's three reasons why I feel like that. Number one is because I really enjoy teaching this stuff. You know, I've been involved in health and fitness now for over two decades. It's something that comes reasonably natural to me, although I do have to work on my uh, waistline as well, just like anybody else, and my health. But it's something which has given me a lot of benefit and I like to share that with other people who are interested in learning it. The second reason is because the seven steps that I'm going to be sharing with you throughout this presentation can, when applied consistently, quite literally transform not only the way you look and feel, but your health as well. And you're going to see a few examples of that as we go through. And then the third reason is I or one of my team get to work with somebody like you, helping them to achieve goals which are goals which possibly have been unthinkable in the past uh, and quite often we help people to achieve what is the unthinkable and again you're going to see some of those examples as we go through now this is going to be a relatively long presentation and the first half of it almost i'm going to be really setting the scene as to what those seven steps are i'm going to do that intentionally and deliberately and here's why if I just simply start by giving you the seven steps, then there's no context in which to understand what I'm saying and sort of build a better understanding around it. So I'm going to start the first half of this uh, presentation off by just giving the context, providing the context, the background, so that when I do share the seven steps, it makes complete sense to you and you get more value from it. So please do bear with me until I get to the starting point with the seven steps. Now, I know you're here to learn about uh, the seven steps to holistic weight loss and better health. So let me kick off, first of all, with uh, three examples, really, of the sorts of results that can be achieved when the information I'm going to be sharing is actually applied. And I'm going to give you a lot more examples than this as we go through. But let's just kick off with, on the far left-hand side, we've got Caroline. Uh, lost over 85 pounds, dropped by 25% in terms of body fat, went from a size 22, close size, down to a size 12. Uh, in the middle, we've got Sue, lost 71 pounds, which is around about 5 stone 1 pound, down 15% in body fat from a size 20 to a 12. And Katie, far right, uh, lost 42 pounds, 20% uh, down in body fat, and dropped from a size 12 down to a size 8. Now, I know I've just spoken about uh, people dropping down clothes sizes, dropping body fat and weight, and that all sounds great. And it may seem a little bit superficial than that, but here's the reality. Uh, body image is quite a big driver for most people, if they're honest about it. But there are other things that people do benefit from when it comes to losing weight. There's obviously your health, and I'll give you some examples of that as we go through. And then, you know, things like your hobbies. What do you actually like doing with your spare time, your downtime? You know, are you wanting to play with kids? Are you want to go on walking holidays? Uh, you just want to be generally healthy overall. So I get it. It's not just about looking great, but that is certainly a big driver. Now. Before I get into this presentation properly, which is going to last for around about roughly 50 minutes, I just want to make sure that you are the right person and you're in the right place. So who is this for? Well, people who want to lose between two and six stone in weight over the next three to 12 months, people who are tired of yo-yoing, fads, powders, starving themselves on crazy diets, or killing themselves with exercise, you know, out there pounding the, the road or in the gymnasiums or following DVDs and absolutely almost collapsing in a heap at the end of it. It's for those who are committed to getting healthy and improving their lives, people who want permanent change. And when I say permanent change, I'm talking about staying within a healthy weight range and people that want something that's holistic, simple, easy to implement and is sustainable. Because look, if it's not sustainable, really, what is the point in doing it? So that leads us on to nicely then who this is not for. And I've got to cover this as well because, you know, I'm respectful of your time and I don't want to waste your time. Uh, if you're one of these people, you can sort of, you know, click the back button and check out another channel. But it's not for people who are, you know, they want the quick fix. There are no quick fixes when it comes to weight loss. There really aren't. Even if you go for medical surgery, which is relatively quick in terms of what they do, the procedure, the recovery after that can be four, five, six weeks. So there really are no quick fixes. Uh, people who are not coachable. You know, if you're not coachable, then really anything that's shared with you, you're not going to be uh, using that information. People are just seeking to gather more information, do nothing with it. And I'm always amazed by the number of people out there that are just fact-finding, gathering sort of machines. They know everything about everything, but rarely put it into practice. And people not serious about taking control and responsibility for their own thinking, actions and results. Because ultimately, 
we all are responsible for our own actions regardless of what we might say to ourselves the book stops with us so in the next 45 minutes or to an hour potentially 50 minutes maybe that that sort of time frame we'll be covering the following things how to deal with difficult situations that may have derailed you in the past how to keep your mindset engaged in achieving your goal how to eat to improve your health and not starve yourself because hey let's face it who wants to be trying to lose weight and starve themselves you may have been there before we're also going to be covering how to develop sustainable healthy habits because that's what it's about ultimately it's about sustaining this long term how to tone shape and strengthen your body with simple quick exercises you know things that require minimal equipment we're not talking about expensive um, home use equipment we're talking about some real basic stuff that take up literally well not literally but take up very little space in your home if you are doing it from home or you, you decide to do things from home and then how to deal with day-to-day -day distractions that can lead to failure because we're all bombarded aren't we in modern you know modern society with social media uh, you know you've got Facebook you've got LinkedIn you, and if you're not on any of these platforms good well done but let's just say you are you've got social media you've got TV you've got magazines you've got newspapers you've got family you've got friends you've got work colleagues and you've got all this information coming at you it can be like walking into a blizzard sometimes and when it comes to weight loss there appears to be an ever-growing blizzard of weight loss solutions out there that people are trying to wade their way through and I'm going to give you some real clarity today on that so basically everything you need to know so that you can lose weight, improve your health uh, without having to starve yourself on some sort of crazy mad diet, be 100% perfect or become a slave to exercise because nobody wants those three things. A few house rules for today's webinar. So first of all, what I say to people is keep an open mind to what you're going to be hearing. You know, try and avoid this classic statement that people often come up with, which is, I know that. <laughs> Guess what? 99% of the people that I've ever coached or my team have ever coached, we're working with people that have a good understanding about what it is they need to do. You're sat there now listening to this and you will have a good understanding as to what it is you need to do to lose weight. But the thing is, people often don't implement that stuff. So I say, keep an open mind. And you know, at the end of the presentation, if you don't want to uh, action anything, then that's perfectly fine as well. But do try and keep an open mind for the next 45, 50 minutes or so. Uh, my client results are not typical. The people you're going to hear about are committed people who put in the effort and did the work. And the results you get are entirely up to you as it was for them. So th there is no magic bullets, as I said earlier. Now, let's just talk about uh, what people have tried in the past to lose weight before you know, I get into these seven uh, steps for holistic uh, weight loss and better health. So first of all, We've got the diets, and there are lots of diets out there. I've just come up with a few here. You've got the 5-2 diet. You've got the ketogenic diet, uh, sometimes abbreviated to keto for those that are in the know. Uh, the paleo diet, Atkins, South Beach, Cambridge, shakes, pills, and lotions. So you've got a whole range of different approaches when it comes to diets. Now, typically, in my experience, it's been that uh, women tend to go down more the diet route when it comes to wanting to lose weight. Men tend to go down more the exercise route. Now look, these diets I've just gone through, there is nothing wrong with those diets. You know, there is a place for them. But as I'll explain later on in this presentation, I think they are missing and maybe not giving you the whole picture. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a few slides time. Then you've got your slimming clubs, Weight Watchers, Slimming World, Lighter Life. We've had multiple clients who have come from, you know, all of those uh, organizations to work with us. In fact, one of the ladies I showed you earlier was a Slimming World leader, uh, Caroline. Then you've got exercise, home use equipment, uh, gym memberships, boot camps. And, you know, I love these home exercise uh, DVDs and things you can buy. But for most people, they're not that effective. They're quite effective for people that are into exercise. But for people who have never done exercise, I've rarely seen them work out for people. Then you've got calorie restriction. You know, watch what you eat. You know, we've all tried that one, myself included. Uh, cut out food groups. You know, I'm going to cut out all the carbs and then people end up feeling absolutely shattered and fasting now has become quite popular and again there's a lot of research out there about fasting which says it's very good for you but you need to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it and, and then finally at the bottom you've got self-help books and a few that I've come across I Can Make You Thin I believe was by Paul McKenna uh, The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters and Sumo by Paul McGee now the last two books there again uh, you know great books 
and I actually recommend the last two books to my clients to read. But here's the problem with uh, that, that I see in the weight loss market. All of those solutions have one key focus, and that tends to be so. If you're into uh, self-help books, it will be on about it will be, be mindset. So that is their key focus. Now, whilst they may talk about diet and exercise, their focus is on mindset. If it's the diets, you know, any of those diet things up there, the five two, the paleo, whatever it might be. Again, they may talk about you need to have a positive mindset, you need to have a goal, you need to exercise, start off nice and easy. They'll give you all that information, but again, their key focus is on their diet. And the problem with that is, you as an individual are having to try and fit your way into their way of thinking, rather than them building something around you as an individual, because you are an individual, and you need something, you know, you have to make some changes, but we have to build something around you, with you at the center of it. And many of these other solutions that I've seen and come across simply don't do that. I'll go into more detail about my research into that as well. Now, when people end up in this situation, which is frustrated and you, know, you may end up shedding a, a tear or two, here are the sort of results that people end up getting as a result of that. People feel exhausted physically and mentally, and, and more mentally than physically, to be honest. Uh, people end up feeling quite discouraged by the whole weight loss process and want to bury their heads in the sand. People end up feeling like they've got no willpower or self-control when they have in lots of other areas of their lives. They feel as though they're destined to be overweight for the rest of their lives because they've tried so many different things on the market and never ever seem to be able to either get started well or lose the weight or keep it off once they've done it. And they end up feeling defeat, uh, defeated about the fact they've failed again. And you know they can end up feeling frustrated, angry. Uh, and often that anger can be directed at your nearest and dearest, friends uh, and work colleagues. And that's no place you want to be, really. But look, there's more to it than that as well. The, the, the other impacts of being, you know, overweight, unfit, unhealthy are, you know, the physical impacts that people go through. And, I, and I've seen these time and time again, you know, lack of energy, fatigue. Uh, we've had clients that I've worked with that tell me, you know, come lunchtime, that's it, they're ready for bed almost. Or early evening, 7, 8 o'clock, they want to just curl up and go to sleep because they're absolutely shattered. Joint pain. Uh, I'll be sharing with you a client later on who had significant joint pain and who was looking at uh, uh, an injection into a hip and potential future medical intervention because of the excess weight she was carrying. And other contributing factors as well. Lack of mobility. I've had clients who struggle to paint the toenails, quite literally struggle to paint the toenails. And then you've got brain fog, you know, difficulty having clarity of thought, be that at work, socializing, or, you know, just out with, with your family. So that's the physical stuff. And then we've got impacts socially, people feeling self conscious um, about themselves, you know, self conscious about the fact they can't go out. Uh, anywhere without thinking about stuff too much. For example, I had one lady, she said she went to a pub and only thing that was going through her mind was A, could she fit in the chair? And B, would the chair take her weight? Now, when she said that to me, I kind of like thought, wow. But that's the level of thinking that people go through and people often don't understand when people are struggling with a weight. Holds them back from going out. How many times have you heard people, maybe yourself, uh, say they don't want to go somewhere and they make up some sort of excuse when really it's just down to the fact they don't feel good about how they look in clothes. So they don't want to go to a social event. Can't keep up with the kids or grandkids. You know, I, I was in a, a place down in um, Oakhampton. It's called um, Tennis Breaks or something. I remember seeing a lady sat in this activity area and it looked like her kids were running around playing and having a good time. And she was just sat in this chair watching them. And I was there for several days at this particular location. And I must have seen her three or four times just sat as an onlooker watching. Uh, and that's, again, not a great place and not a great way to be spending your life when you've got kids or grandkids. You want to be in there doing it with them as much as you can. And then relationships. Uh, I've had people I've worked with who quite literally have to sleep in separate rooms because, you know, one of them snores uh, because they're overweight, because it's been shown that being overweight can be a contributing factor to uh, snoring. So imagine that, having to sleep in a separate room from your partner. And finally, they can't do the things that they want to do. Basically, their whole world is shrinking uh, much before time. You know, when you're a baby, you've got uh, a mat that you can play on, you can just about crawl about when we get to our, you know, 90s or 100s maybe, most people, again, your world shrinks. 
but a lot of the people I'm talking about are in their sort of you know 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and suddenly they will shrunk uh, down to almost being held captive in their own house. And again, that's no way to be. And then we've got the emotional impact on people. You know, just generally feeling uncomfortable in your own skin, knowing that the body you're in, when you look in the mirror, you think, actually, I just can't believe that's me. In your mind, you might see something different, but when you look in the mirror, you just can't believe it's you. And then there's low confidence, and that low confidence can spill over into so many different areas of your life. You know, I've had clients who have been terrified of standing up and speaking, and I'll give you some examples as we go through. Uh, just because we're overweight, unfit, and it affects the confidence, and then they've lost the weight, and suddenly they're doing things that they would have never have done before because they just feel so much better about themselves. And then you've got people who are stressed or obsessed about the weight all the time. It's just something on their minds, morning, noon, and night. And every waking moment they have, weight pops into their head when they wake up in the morning. It's weight. Go to bed at night, it's weight. It's just an ongoing obsession in, in the mind. Feeling weak, unmotivated, uh, and not having enough willpower. Um, just feeling like, you know, you just haven't got that about you. Can't stick with anything and feel like a failure, uh, despite being successful, probably in many other areas of, uh, of their lives, uh, and indeed for yourself, for your life. And, and becoming a poor role model or an embarrassment to family, friends, or work colleagues. And again, that is no way to be spending your life just because of the weight that you're carrying. So what if there were an easier way to lose the weight, improve your health and make those negative things I've just mentioned go away? Would you be interested? Of course you would, otherwise you wouldn't still be here now. So let me just now really simplify weight loss on one slide before I really go into the detail on this stuff. So here is simplified. Mindset, diet and exercise combined together is the solution. Now guess what? I know that you already know this. You know, you're not daft. It's not as if you just arrived here from planet wherever and nobody's ever told you this stuff. This stuff is out there and it's everywhere. So this isn't about learning more information. What I'm going through today is not me trying to bombard you with uh, the latest thing in terms of uh, the latest psychological techniques that are out there, the latest research on proteins, fats and carbs, or the latest new five minute wonder workout is going to be a six pack ab or abs. Look, you already have sufficient information in your head right now to become super successful with weight loss and a lot fitter just by combining what you know in terms of mindset and me filling in just a few of the gaps, what you know about diet and exercise, and again, me just filling in a few of the gaps. You combine those three things together, and I guarantee you, you can become successful. So, Let's get into an, another little slide here and talk about. So here's the real problem that I see in, in the world today when it comes to weight loss. It's simple. You are stuck in your own head with conflicting information. You know, just go back to a few slides earlier. All those different options for weight loss. It, it, there's masses out there. And you haven't yet learned the new model of how to simplify things so that you can achieve the look and feel you want often in record time. And record time, what, what do I mean by that? Look, I've worked with clients who have achieved their goals in half the time they thought it was possible to achieve the results they got. And they've done that not by me teaching them some magic stuff, again, just by me helping them to take what they already know about mindset, diet and exercise, what I know or one of my coaches knows, piecing all that together into a personalized plan of action so that they can become successful. It's as simple as that. Okay, the new model. How will things be different or any different, you know, using this new model as opposed to doing all the other stuff that you could potentially get access to? Well, let, let's go through it. First of all, you'll have more control over your feelings of self-doubt and take more action. You know, when you can control that sense of self-doubt, which we all have from time to time, and you can override that, you are going to keep taking action. And when you keep taking action, you're going to be continually moving towards your goals. You'll be able to maintain long periods of focus, which will accelerate your progress. That goes without saying. You'll be able to boost your energy level so that you can get more things done uh, with energy to spare. And you know who wouldn't want more energy? 
your new healthy habits will become more consistent, almost as if on autopilot. So the more you do something, the more automatic it becomes. The more automatic it becomes, the less brain space it takes up. The less brain space it takes up, the more other things you can start to get involved in without having your brain occupied by weight loss and what should I eat, how should I exercise. We get you on automatic pilot. You'll finally have a proven step-by-step -step lifestyle system that you can use at will to lose anywhere between 16 and 31 pounds in 12 weeks and more if necessary. So basically, once you have the, the system, let's say you need to lose uh, 60 pounds, you can just improve upon the system. It's not about you learn the system, then you have to learn something else new. No, you learn the system and then you just make it better. You improve upon the system. And as I mentioned earlier, You'll be able to do all of this without having to be 100% perfect, without having to starve yourself on some sort of crazy diet or become a slave to exercise. Now, I've done quite a bit of talking there before I've gone on to the, the meat of what these seven steps are. But I just want to kind of set the scene really so that you kind of get some sort of idea as to the thinking that goes into our approach when it comes to weight loss, because it goes way beyond just talking about diet and exercise. So I just thought to share a little bit about me so you know where I'm coming from and you can kind of understand maybe why I'm saying some of the things I'm saying. So let's just go through a few of these pickies here. So top left, we've got me doing an event called Wear Your Wedding, uh, Wear Your Wedding Dress Again event, which I organized for a local charity. Uh, it was Cancer Research. And we got a load of uh, women and men to put their wedding day outfits on. And we ran that event at the White Hart Hotel in Salisbury, if you know Salisbury. Uh, the one down from that's a Race for Life event, me popping the champers. Uh, which I do most years. And then right at the bottom there, you've got me doing a presentation on health and wellness to a group of individuals. And on the far right hand side, you've got me with my son, Alexander. And this picture is quite old, by the way. <laughs> and that was me the morning I was about to be deployed out to um, uh, Kosovo on operational duties. And the large picture that you can see there is me and a group of clients in my uh, private gym in Salisbury. Uh, doing a workout on New Year's Day, just celebrating the year and doffing our caps to a, a healthy new year. So my name's Eric Simpson. Uh, I'm a proven weight loss and fitness coach. Um, I'm sure you've got that idea now. You've seen a few examples already, and you're going to see a few more as we go through this presentation. I created my weight loss and fitness system after combining my years spent as an Army physical training instructor. Um, I did a degree, and as part of that degree, I did some research into weight loss. I wrote a 3,000-word essay. And the great thing about writing that essay was it gave me a real understanding or better understanding into why, you know, what is it that stops people from starting? What are the cycles that people have to go through when they get started to, you know, achieving their goal? Uh, but and also, why is it people fail? You know, why do people stop uh, having started on their journey? And probably the most important thing that I learned as part of that research was really what were people doing who started off successfully, lost the weight and kept it off? Uh, and that was really fascinating to understand that and how that all um, came together as part of that research. I've had training in cognitive behaviour therapy, something that's now used in the NHS, uh, abbreviated to CBT, you may have come across that. NLP, which stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming, uh, just looking at the way the mind works and how we can basically reprogram ourselves to do better things, more uh, impactful, more positive things. Uh, training in nutrition, certified adult educator and a personal trainer. And the system I've created works so well, it helped one lady become a fitness model aged 47, beating girls 15 years her junior. And it helped another person lose uh, 8 stone 1 pound in less than 12 months. So I like to think I've got a pretty decent background when it comes to delivering this sort of information. Now, I'm not one of those guru types that just talks a good game but has no evidence to back up their claims. So I just want to share one or two more uh, case studies with you before we get into these seven steps. So I reinvented myself, Caroline, 85 pounds lighter. I reduced her body fat down by 25% and dropped from a size 22 down to a 12. Uh, that's Caroline on the right there doing Race for Life, and that's a photograph of her and I together uh, with a group of other people that did the event. And I think we're actually having a sneaky bit of, a, uh, I don't know, it's like a bit of cake, I think. So, you know, you, you are allowed a bit of cake uh, from time to time. <laughs> and here we have, I knew I had to do something about my weight, and I did it. Uh, Daphne lost 28 pounds, dropped her body fat by 10.5%. 
and went down from a size 16 down to a size 12. Now Daphne, age 75, you could be forgiven for thinking, really at 75, is she still coachable or is she too set in her ways? Well, to her credit, she was open-minded, enthusiastic, uh, and, and did the work and you know got the result. Uh, my physio recommended the program to help reduce my back pain and it feels great losing the weight. Rachel, 56 pounds lighter. 18% uh, body fat down, size 20 down to a size 14. Uh, funny, working with Rachel, you know, she's, early on in the program, she um, had a girlies weekend away. And Rachel, by her own admission, liked drinking beer. And often these girly weekends, there was a lot of beer drunk. And typically she might be gaining three or four pounds over that weekend. And she said to me, what am I going to do? I said, well, you know, you've committed to start on this program. Uh, go and do what you think you need to do. Well, she came back a week later and she came back three or four pounds late, uh, lighter than what she was the previous week. And that was a real big milestone for her because it proved to her that she could commit to something and stick with it, even when she was in that sort of social setting where the pressure's on. And we've all been in those sort of settings where we have peer group pressure to do certain things. And she withstood that. Uh, and that was credit to her. And dare I say, also credit to the program that we coached her through. And she went on and took off the 56 pounds. So, you know, well done to her. This has made me change my mindset so I don't beat myself up anymore. Sue, 31 pounds lighter. Uh, down by 12.1%, went from a size 14 down to a size 8. Now, Sue had this thing where, like a lot of people, she d her thing was, I don't do failure. You know, if Sue failed in the morning with her breakfast, let's say, then she'd fail with her lunch, she'd then fail with her evening meal, and guess what? She'd fail for the week, for the month, and then ultimately she ends up 31 pounds heavier. And that's a typical cycle that people go through. So she was able to change her mindset and have days where she wasn't fantastic, but it didn't ruin the whole week or the whole month. And you know, two years after losing that weight, I ran into Sue, and she's still pretty much the same as what she was then. Uh, and there you see a pictured um, in a gym gear holding the weights, looking toned, and also was able to put her bikini back on, having not wore a bikini for over 20 years. And another photograph of her being active, doing some cycling on holiday. Okay, so what is this new uh, model to simplify things. We've had a really big lead up to this. So there are seven steps to the new model for holistic weight loss and better health. I'm going to take you through each of those steps now one by one, uh, starting off with number one. You must stop being a victim type of person and learn to reframe difficult situations. Now this is quite a tough pill for a lot of people to swallow because let's be honest, n n myself included, none of us want to be told we're being a victim. We all want to be able to justify what's going on uh, and what's making our situation worse. It's something that it's out of our control. Somebody else is doing it, you know. It's a, it's a work colleague. It, it's the economy. It's a family member. It's my spouse. It's my kids. Uh, it's my history. It's my family. We've always been overweight. And we put this victim sort of type of um, uh, jumper on or hat on or whatever garment clothing you want to choose. And we become paralysed and we just lose and give away our power. And one of the books I mentioned earlier by Patrick McGee, Sumo, in that self-help uh, section, he talks about people wearing the, uh, the victim T-shirt. And that's why I recommend the book, because it helps people to get their heads around the fact that you do have the control and you can make the difference as long as you don't become the victim. So you've got to learn not to be the person that says, well, that's just me. Uh, Oh, that's just the way I am, uh, as that's a sure way to remain stuck in the body and the health you have, and it won't get any easier the older you get. So decide you're not going to become, or decide you're going to become more mentally resilient and practice it. And if you slip back into old habits, as we all do from time to time, just get up and go again. And that's all anyone can do. You know, we've had clients who have had tricky times, a whole variety of things have happened to them where it's not their confidence. Uh, they have temporarily been a bit of a victim, but then they've picked themselves up and gone again. And the key thing is you have to give yourself some time um, to make these adjustments. It's not going to happen overnight, so do give yourself some time. So here we have uh, Marie uh, talking about reframing difficult situations, lost 57 pounds. 
reduced the body fat by 20% and went from a size 14 down to a size 8. Now, I didn't realise this, but Marie told me as we went through her programme that when she first contacted me, first of all, she'd been to uh, our website several times uh, and not done anything about it. And the reason for that was she felt as a, a biology teacher uh, with a good understanding of how the body works and umpteen years of doing exercise, uh, age 50, adult professional woman, what on earth could we possibly tell her that she didn't already know, you know, how we were going to make a difference. So that was part of her thinking. When she made the phone call, I didn't realise she'd made the phone call from a private car park, a uh, private hospital car park. And she was sat there with her husband uh, contemplating a surgical procedure. And then her words, she came to her senses and sort of thought, well, how has it come to this? I'm a mature, educated woman. Uh, I know what I should be doing. Why am I sat in this car park contemplating spending I don't know, eight, nine, ten, twelve thousand pounds on a medical procedure for something that I could take control of? Added to this situation, uh, and Marie's, I say, three grown-up kids as well. Added to this situation, she was also on antidepressants, so she wasn't in the best place in the world. Well, anyway, she, without going into all the detail. Uh, with the coaching that we went through, she was able to learn how to reframe things better. She went on and lost the weight. She did a fantastic bike ride, which was her passion, around the Isle of Wight. I'm sure you can't quite make that map out, but it was around the Isle of Wight. It was 64 miles. She breezed through that. Then she was back in the gym the next day training. So that's just an example, a good example, I think, of somebody being able to reframe their current situation. Number two, you must develop the ability to refocus quickly when you lose it, because guess what? We all lose our focus from time to time. There's very few people, if anybody at all, to be honest, that can focus 100% all the time. So life gets busy for everybody and you are going to be pulled in different directions and things will seem to intensify the second you try to take care of your health. It always seems to happen that way. You know, people start on the program and suddenly things pop out of the woodwork. Commitments have got to be met. Demands are being made upon them. Things are put in the diary. It's just an inevitability of it. It's just what happens. So you do need to be able to refocus back on your goal. So learning to refocus means practicing visualization, positive self-talk, and experiencing the thing physically, if that's at all possible, i.e. touching an item of clothing, something of that nature. And, and here's an example of one lady who um, kind of did that really. Joe lost 42 pounds, uh, dropped her body fat percentage by 18.4%. And drop from a size 14 down to a size 8. And that's Joe pictured in, in my private gym in Salisbury. So the pictures you can see there, the one in the middle is of a, uh, a clothes shop. And if you live in Salisbury, it's called Phase 8. And that was one of her goals. Not particularly that dress, but dresses in that shop was her kind of a goal. And on the far right, you can see her with the photographer, Anthony. Because what we do with our clients is we, we often offer them a, a makeover shoot once they hit the goal. And that's her with Anthony doing, you know, he's teaching us some posing. But the dress in the window and, and the top is what she's actually wearing. I think it's a different color top, I think. But it's the same outfit that she was looking at in the shop. So she became the woman in the shop. That was a goal. That was an image she had in her head. Uh, not necessarily that drop, but you know, looking in a dress, looking at dresses, and she actually achieved it. So that's fantastic. Uh, and then this next one, uh, quite funny this one. Robert uh, lost 42 pounds, body fat percentage down by 15.4%, 15 15 waist size 39 down to 32. And I picked this one because I've wanted to use this, <laughs> this picture of Robert for years. Uh, the, the one of him eating the chocolate. He worked in, as you can see there, the Salisbury chocolate bar patisserie. I'm not sure if it's still there now. I think it might have gone now. But at the time, this guy worked with chocolate cakes, uh, I think six days a week. And he actually liked eating it as well. So he was good enough to take this joke photograph from me. But that was an example of a guy uh, having to literally refocus every single day because he was surrounded by the stuff that he quite enjoyed eating, which was chocolate cakes and biscuits and that sort of stuff. And that's probably why he got into the situation that he got into before he started working with me but I just thought it was a great photograph I wanted to share that with you and, and then this final one on um, refocusing um, and having a goal you know I spoke about visualization self-talk and all those sort of good things well a lady called Virginia so she had she lost 13.5 pounds not quite a stone but still a good amount of weight uh, dropped uh, 
body fat percentage by 7% and went from a size 14 down to a 12. Now, what you can see on this slide is at the top sort of left hand side, you've got Virginia sat there with her goal card because we get our clients to actually physically write their goal cards out. So they've got something that they can start to visualize and work towards. And for her, you can probably just make out there's a table there and, and the writing around the side talks about it being in France and about it being with her, her two sons. And there you have it on the right hand side, Virginia, for her 80th birthday, she came to me when she was 79, so for her 80th birthday, there she is in Nice uh, at this particular venue uh, with her two sons. So I know a lot of people think that, you know, goal setting and visualisation, uh, self-taught all sounds like a bit of woo-woo. Well, it, it kind of can be that way if you just do one element, so if you just try and do self-talk, and you're more of a visual person, it's not going to work. If you're more of a sort of person that doesn't visualize that easily and you try and just do visualization, you may struggle with that. You may be more of an auditor, so you need to do more self-talking. But you've got to combine all those three things together for it to actually start to resonate on a deeper level. I'm not, I'm not talking about an intellectual level. I'm talking about this resonating on a level far deeper than just simple intellect. Because let's be honest, if losing weight was just down to intellect, uh, and knowing stuff, everybody would be fit and slim. So it's more of an emotional thing. And the way to access that emotion is to visualize it, self-talk it, and try and experience it, touching it, feeling it where you possibly can. On to number three, use real food to re-energize your body. You know, whilst I have in the past used shakes myself and some of my clients occasionally have used shakes, uh, I always and we always teach them how to use real food to re-energize the body because let's face it you are going to be surrounded by food pretty much all year round you know you go to a social event uh, birthdays anniversaries christmases whatever it might be food is often a central part of that event so we need to understand how to use real food uh, and work with it and eat it so let's keep this one real simple if you want to feel like you've had a good meal feel emotionally balanced and losing weight at the same time practice this simple eating habit plan to eat lean protein complex carbohydrates and healthy fats at each meal so that's breakfast that's mid-morning if you have something mid-morning that's lunch that's something mid-afternoon and that's something for your evening meal as well if you combine those three elements together i can guarantee you you will feel satiated you will stabilize your blood sugar levels you will stabilize your hormones and you'll feel a million dollars your energy levels go through the roof and you'll find yourself losing weight naturally and here's the good thing you'll never have to count another calorie and your weight will drop off and you'll be able to maintain it within a healthy weight range for as long as you like and when I say a healthy weight range I'm talking about you know if you get down to 10 stone you've lost three stone that healthy weight range might be 10 stone to 10 10 and you might think well 10 pounds that's a lot well it's important to understand a healthy weight range gives you the flexibility to be able to gain a pound or two because if you are the sort of person that wants to get to 10 stone let's just say for example and you expect to stay there forever it ain't going to happen and the second you put a pound on you're going to feel despondent uh, discouraged and as if you're failing again and you end up piling all the weight back on so you need to have a healthy weight range so here's an example of somebody who just ate healthily uh, Sue she ate didn't like anything to do with smoothies or shakes or any of that sort of stuff supplementing with vitamins nothing she just ate regular food and she lost 71 pounds reduced her body fat percentage by 20 percent and dropped from a size 20 down to a 12 uh, and the photographs there you can see of sue you've got a before photograph her in purple obviously and then you've got this one up here i just put my arrow there that's sue right there where my arrow is as part of the race for life team uh, that we have uh, me again popping the champagne beginning to think I'm a bit of a boozer maybe and the picture just below that is of her picture doing the Kilimanjaro challenge now here's the thing you know I said earlier on that you know dropping dress sizes being toned and lean and all that sort of good stuff I said there's more to it than that you've got your health you've got your hobbies well this was something that she wanted to do as a personal uh, challenge in terms of a hobby and that was a Kilimanjaro challenge so you know it goes way beyond just wanting to lose weight and the other thing that Sue did, and I wish I had a photograph of this, which I don't, uh, her and her husband organised a, a big social bash down in Bournemouth where 120 people, 130 people were assembled, and Sue had to stand up and speak to them. 
And that's pretty nerve wracking at the best of time for anybody to stand up and speak to that many people. Well, you know, she stood up, she spoke to them and she said to me afterwards, she said, Eric, you know, there's no way in this world I could have stood up and spoke to that many people had I have not lost the weight, she said, because it just gave me so much more confidence. But she said she was still a little bit shaky. She said she was shaky because she said she was shaky and her knees were almost missing. She was that shaky up there. But the point being, she was actually able to stand up there and, and give a short talk and she quite literally held the audience in the palm of her hand. And I was there to witness it and I'd say it was quite a, a wonderful experience to, to be involved in it, to see how it, it changed her and give her that level of confidence. Moving on to number four, strengthening your habits. It's all good and well doing something well for one day, but we need to be able to do it consistently over a prolonged period of time. Otherwise, it's simply just going to be a, another faddy thing that we get involved in. So we need to learn how to strengthen those habits. So strengthening your behavior will come down to your willingness to change or modify these things. So you've got to look at your daily habits. You know, if you're in the habit of waking up uh, as one lady I work with, jumping in a car, it going on automatic pilot and pulling into McDonald's, as she used to tell me, that was a daily habit. You know, if you're not prepared to address those daily habits, then you're going to struggle big time. You've got to look at your beliefs about health and fitness. You know, one of the common beliefs out there around health and fitness is uh, around weight training for women. And if you do weight training, you become big and muscular. Well, I think you'll agree all the women you've seen so far, there's not one of them that looks like a bodybuilder. So that's just one of those beliefs that people need to adjust. And there are many others as well. Your values around health and fitness. You know, how many times have you heard people say they really value their health, yet you look at their behaviours and they seem to contradict the fact that they say they really value their health. You need to look at your environment internally and externally. So that's the things that's going on inside your head, you know, your own self-talk. Again, going back to beliefs and how you speak to yourself. Are you beating yourself up continually? Because if you can't adjust that environmental situation, then nothing's going to work. And then looking at your external environment, you know, looking at what lives in your kitchen, looking at, you know, and the kitchen, by the way, goes beyond your physical kitchen. It goes into the glove compartment of your car. It goes into uh, the deep pockets in your coat. It goes into the drawers at work. So looking at your external environment, the people you associate with, the, the things you listen to, the things you read. And then your ability and willingness to be coached and take consistent action. Because I said earlier, if you're not coachable, it's difficult because you're not going to do anything. And if you don't take uh, not just action but consistent action, you're not going to reap the benefits of what you're doing because it does take time for things of any sort of significance to come to fruition. You know, we do live in a society now where it's very much about pay now or get it now and pay later. Uh, um, it's a very much a now, now, now society. Well, the thing about weight loss is you put the first week in, you look in the mirror, naked, nothing's changed. A month later, you may notice the odd thing that's changed. But over a prolonged period of time, bang, the magic happens. So you have to buy into this idea of taking that sort of long-term uh, consistent action. So here's just an example. Adam lost 113 pounds, which is just over 8 stone. Reduced his body fat by 45%. Went down from a waist size, I think it's 42 to 46, down to 32. He did all of that in under 12 months. An incredible effort. You know, I spoke to his dad uh, probably two, three years after he'd achieved this. And his dad said to me, you know, Eric, if I'd have just read this in a magazine, like these things certainly you know, appear in, I would have just thought this is absolute bullshit. It, not believable. I don't believe a word of it. They've made it up. But he said, I, I can't believe it. Not only has he done it, but he's actually kept the weight off and he's absolutely uh, thriving in his day-to-day -day life, his relationships and his job. Everything is just absolutely taken off for him. Uh, and that's just a great example of somebody strengthening their habits and making it consistent. On to number five, which is boost your metabolism with a balanced exercise program. There's absolutely no getting away from the fact if you want to have a balanced uh, weight management program once you've lost the weight, you need to put in some form of exercise to help you manage your weight long term. What I would say at this point is this. Exercise is not for weight loss when you start out. I see so many people making that mistake. Uh, out pounding the road, hitting the gym, doing the home workout stuff, thinking that the harder they work, the more weight they're going to lose. It simply doesn't work that way. Y your diet is critical part. You know, once you get your head right, it's your diet and then it's the exercise. So let's talk about boosting your metabolism. Look, there are so many benefits to a balanced exercise program, which includes weight training, 
Uh, I can't mention them all here, but here are just a few. First of all, you're going to boost your metabolism, which basically means you're going to improve your lean body tissue. I'm sure you're familiar with the term, um, what's that term, um, middle age spread, and that often happens, you know, roughly past the age of 40, that's when we sort of see a significant uh, reduction in metabolism. And if you're a female, you start off with less lean body tissue anyway. So you're really up against it. So we need to get some weight training in there. And that's often why you often hear women saying, you know, they've started a weight loss program with a partner, you know, male, and they seem to lose weight that much quicker. Well, that's because men have more lean body tissue and it's easier for them to lose the weight. So that's one of the benefits of putting weight training in there, boost your metabolism. Improve uh, muscle tone and your look. Improve your posture. You know, classic is to start to round around the shoulders, and that's down to aging and the way we basically sit and work during the day. We tend to sit in a almost like a fetal position. Uh, redu uh, reduce the risk of osteoporosis. So whilst going out walking is great for lower limb, we need to do something for upper limbs as well, and reduce the risk of type two diabetes. I just want to go back to that slide a moment there. So again, just to point out, uh, when Marie started, one of her goals was to actually, you might be able to see it, I don't know if you can see it, but it was to have a navel pierced and to try and get a defined abdominal area, which I think she's done really well there. And that is a combination, again, of the diet and the exercise. And I'm not saying everyone's going to achieve that look, and maybe not everybody wants to achieve that look, but it just gives you an example of where you can go with resistance training. Okay. If you don't include a balanced exercise program as part of your lifestyle, uh, you are going to find it difficult to maintain a healthy weight range because exercise, quite simply, is a management tool. You know, Once you've got within your healthy weight range and if you decide you want the odd glass of wine or a bit of chocolate or whatever it is that you have, that exercise can often balance things out for you. Also, doing the exercise keeps healthy eating, positive thinking, top of mind. So it has to be part of your program. And here's just another example of someone that used weight training uh, successfully. Katie lost 42 pounds, reduced her body fat um, by 20%, went from a size 12 down to a size 8. And, you know, okay, dressed there in black, you might say, well, actually, I'd like to be that size now if I could. You know, maybe if you're 16, 18 stone, you might, that might be a target. But, again, it's just an example of what somebody has done. And this was a lady that I mentioned went on to become a fitness model. I mentioned earlier on in the presentation. Uh, and positioned beating girls 15 years her junior and actually was featured in a, uh, a local newspaper. Number six, controlling your emotions. We call it surfing your emotions. You know, this is one of the big, big keys to being successful at weight loss, being able to manage your emotions when things are not quite going your way. Uh, the people that tend to be the most successful when it comes to weight loss and probably in life in general are those people that can be more flexible and not overreact to situations or life events. And I've categorized life events into one, two, and three levels. So level one, an annoying conversation with a friend, family member, or a work colleague that can lead to unplanned eating. So somebody annoys you and suddenly you go into a mindless state and you start eating when you shouldn't be. That's a classic. And those sorts of things can happen pretty much day in and day out. Level two, um, it should say loss, not lose, but lo uh, loss of employment relationship breakdown or an off the rail son or daughter. You know, that can cause a lot of emotional angst uh, when those things happen. And again, can lead to this sort of mindless, uh, unplanned eat uh, eating. And then you've got level three, uh, life-threatening illnesses, sudden loss of a, um, a friend or sudden loss of a family member. These are pretty major things when they happen uh, and they can cause us to do all manner of things. So the way to get around that really is um, be prepared, organized, uh, have sufficient sleep and relaxation. Uh, and all this will help you to stay on track or at least stay close to it. Because if you're not doing those basic things, when these things do hit you, then you really can go off the rails. And here we have uh, Julie, uh, lost 85 pounds, uh, body fat down by 26%, dropped from a size 18 down to a 12 now, a few things about Sue. She, again, emotionally uh, lives in a place called Salisbury. Her mum, uh, getting on in years, lives up in Bristol, not particularly well. A lot of angst there uh, and a fair degree of stress. And anyone that's got older parents that don't live with them will appreciate this. 
Uh, in addition to that, boys at university trying to get qualified, trying to finish off the dissertations, there's pressure there, and she works as well. So quite a few things going on. But in addition to that, she had a really bad hip. And if you look at the photograph at the top in the middle, that's me with uh, Julie's osteopath who referred her to me. So Julie was two weeks away from a hip injection and looking at potential future medical intervention for a hip. Long story short, she lost the 85 pounds. She wanted to be in better shape uh, and she wanted to reduce hip pain. She did both. That was her walking up in Yorkshire somewhere. And the other picture is of her snowshoeing and, and the larger picture is of her taking part in the senior games and actually winning some medals. So again, able to control her emotions and got a fantastic result. So finally then, number seven. And number seven is invest in coaching and training and learn from somebody who has helped others to do it. And that just kind of makes absolute common sense to do that. You know, why wouldn't you want to learn from someone that has learnt this stuff um, and understands it? And in the shot there, you've got uh, Fiona. Fiona took off, I think it's about 25 pounds, uh, and went on to be featured in a, a magazine. And the title of that, maybe you can read it, it was uh, Building the New Me. So invest in coaching and training is a proven shortcut to success. Just think about all the people that you know out there, like sportsmen, for example, Roger Federer. You know, I'm a big Roger Federer tennis fan. Sorry if you're an Adele fan. And at the time of this recording, he still had more majors. Um, but look, with well over 10,000 hours of successfully coaching and training people into better health, you learn a thing or two about weight loss and fitness. And there's a saying, success leaves clues. Well, we've documented those clues into a simple, structured and supportive program that also provides accountability to anyone that is coachable and willing to put in the effort consistently. For that person, and that may not be you, possibly, the results can be pretty amazing as you've already seen throughout this presentation. Believe me when I say there is a shortcut and an easier way to achieve success. Not easy, but an easier way. And it's with coaching and training from somebody who has a proven system and has actually helped others to do it. Just a few more case studies, if I may. Feel fitter and it cured my acid reflux. Andy, 43, uh, 43 pounds lighter, reduced his fat percentage by 16% and reduced his waist down from a 36 down to 32. And you know what was interesting was uh, his diet changed and that took him off um, a product called Renitidine. I remember him saying to me, he felt as though he had shares in this company Renitidine because he was eating and taking so many of the pills. And that's a photograph of me at Andy and his wife Kim's uh, wedding. I was uh, fortunate enough to be invited to that. Just feel so much better about myself, Kevin. Uh, 40 pounds lighter, 12.5% reduction in his body fat. Waist size 39 down to 33, and we often joked about the photograph. His after photograph, we, we figured he should be on the front page of a, a men's GQ magazine. I reached my goal in 12 weeks, and four years later, I'm still there, and it's not a fad. Val, 31 pounds lighter, um, reduced the body fat by 12%, and dropped from a size 14 down to a size 10. So she achieved that goal in 12 weeks. Uh, not everybody does that, but Val just kind of, you know, jumped on it and, and, and did it. Now, basically, you have two options at this point. You can either take the blue pill or the red pill. So I'm now going Matrix on you. And if you don't know what the Matrix is, the Matrix movie is. It was a movie shot back in, I think it's 2000. Uh, lead actor in that was a chap called Keanu Reeves. And there was a part in the film where a guy called Morpheus, played by... I forget his name now, but sat in this chair and offered uh, the character Neo that was played by Keanu Reeves either the blue pill or the red pill. Uh, and that was a situation. And if he took the blue pill, he'd go to sleep. And when he woke up the next day, he would have forgotten all the conversations he'd had with uh, Morpheus. And if he took the red pill, Morpheus would take him down the rabbit hole and show him real, really what the whole world was about. Well, you're kind of in a similar situation now. So if you take the blue pill, you can forget about everything you've just seen and heard and continue your search and I genuinely wish you well because I appreciate the way that we do it, the way that we offer the program does not suit everybody and that's perfectly fine. 
If you take the red pill, you can learn and use a proven step-by system from somebody who has actually helped others similar to you achieve that goal. Now, if you take the red pill and decide to work with me or one of my team, here's what you're going, here's what, here's what you're in for in terms of results and speed of those results. So here are the rough timelines for my clients and their results. The seven step system is designed to help you lose between 16 and 31 pounds every 12 weeks. Now I know that sounds like a huge amount in your mind, possibly 31 pounds, but it's doable. But let's just say you lost 16 pounds in 12 weeks. That's still a pretty significant amount of weight to be losing every 12 weeks if you need to lose more than 31 pounds. And again, I say Val lost the, uh, that weight in 12 weeks and kept it off four years later. So here's how we start to build the foundations for my clients and their results. So to achieve those sorts of results, it ain't just about giving you a diet plan uh, and an exercise regime. So here's what we do. Within the first week, we'll get you to mentally orientate to the journey ahead. So we get you orientated to where you're going. Because until you're orientated properly, mentally, you'll just be treating this like some kind of a, a sprint event. And it's not, it's like a marathon uh, and a steady state marathon with consistent progress. Within the second week, we'll get your internal and external environment set up for long-term weight loss success and management. Within the third week, we'll help you to create an even greater desire for achieving your goals. I'm always amazed when people start on weight loss that they don't spend a little bit more time in developing their mindset and their goals a little bit more as they go through the process because that's going to help to keep you going. Within the fourth week, we'll get you more focused on your eating plan. I know you're probably thinking, what, week four? Yes, that's right. And you may be thinking, well, surely I should be doing eating in week one. Well, we do give you a journal with healthy eating plans in there. So it's not as if we don't touch on it. We do, but we don't go into great detail about it. And here's why. 99.9% .9 of the people we work with, if we sat them down with a pen and paper and said, you've got 10 minutes to write out a healthy day's plan of eating, they could all pretty much do it. So rather than diving straight in with, here's the plan, and having your eyes glaze over, we'd much rather give you that little bit of space so that you can start to utilize some of the information and knowledge you've had from past experiences as effectively as you can, along with what's in our journals. And then when we get to talking about food, it's simply a case of us reviewing, talking uh, through a few things, tweaking a few things, and sending you on your way, and, and keeping track of that over time. And that's how we address the, uh, the food thing. So we don't dive in. I'll just quickly share a story with you if I may. I know that time's getting on, but I think this is an important one. I was running a group training program. Uh, I had a lady on it called Heather. The, the session had finished. Everybody had left bar Heather. She was sat there. I looked up. She was still there. And she said to me, well, what am I going to eat? I said, well, you know, we've covered this. We've covered that. And I've shown you what's in the book. And based on your own experience, you can put something together. Anyway, she wasn't happy with that. And, and she didn't want to leave until I spent a bit more time with her. So I gave her a bit more guidance on it. Anyway, 12 weeks later, uh, when I was doing the, uh, like a testimonial with her, she said as part of a testimonial, she almost quit after week one. And she almost quit because I didn't cover food in week one. And she just didn't know what she was going to do with herself. And this is an intelligent woman that had tried multiple different ways of losing weight in the past. Well, 12 weeks later, she'd lost over two stone. So that just shows you the power of the information you already have in your head. So you may be wondering now, okay, what next? Well, if this sounds like an approach that would help you achieve your goal, then let's talk. Over the next five days, I've set aside some time to talk to you to see if I can help. So we'll speak on the phone for roughly 10 to 15 minutes. I'll ask you a few questions to assess where you are and what I think you need. I'll describe the program and you'll get to ask me a few questions, including the various investment levels, which I'm happy to discuss on the phone. And please don't worry, there is nothing to buy or sign up for on this call, because I appreciate when people get on calls, there is this fear factor that I'm going to be signed up for something or I'm going to be committed to something. That is not the case. If we both think there's a potential fit, we can then arrange to meet at my private gym on Castle Street in Salisbury, but with one of my other team or another coach I've trained up, they may well be coming to you or you could be going to their facility to uh, have a conversation with them. So just to uh, recap who this is for, people that want to lose between two and six stone in weight in the next three to 12 months, people who are tired of yo-yoing uh, up and down with their weight or fad diets, powders or starving themselves or killing themselves with exercise, 
those who are committed to getting healthy and improving their lives, people who want permanent change, permanent lifestyle change, people that want something that's holistic, simple, easy to implement and is sustainable. Otherwise, what is the point in doing it? So all you need to do now then is just go to www.loseweightgetfit.co.uk forward slash apply. There'll be a form to fill out there just to make sure that, you know, we are a good fit. It's like a qualification form to make sure you're not wasting your time. Or if you can't get access that way, click on the link below this video. Now, I anticipate there'll be anywhere between 20 and 50 people in this area who will watch this webinar this week. And my schedule can only handle about six calls over the next five to five days or so. So if you're ready, I'd recommend you apply now. And that will probably apply to the other coaches as well that deliver this program. Just one more thing. Um, if you recognize that character there, in shot, it's one of my favorite TV detectives. His name's Columbo. And that was one of his catch lines before he was going to leave the room when he was trying to get in close to uh, finding the criminal to say, just one more thing. And my just one more thing is this for you. If you do decide to make the phone call, keep this to yourself. You know, this is a personal thing you're doing. You don't need to tell everybody, maybe just your nearest and dearest, but anybody else does not need to know what you are getting involved in. Because here's a problem. The second the cat's out of the bag and you tell people what you're doing, everybody suddenly becomes a weight loss expert. They want to advise you on their, you know, what you should be eating, when you should be eating, how you should be eating, how you should be exercising, how long you should be exercising for. And then when you start losing the weight, don't lose any more weight. You're looking thin now. Should you be eating that? It's just unnecessary pressure comments, distractions that you don't need. So top, top tip we give to all of our clients is keep it to yourself. Look, thank you for being with me today. I know it's been a, a, a long presentation. Uh, I hope you've got some value from it. Uh, love to hear from you. Again, thank you for your time today. Take care and goodbye for now.